Okay, so we're going to go in three, two, one. Lions Lounge Lockdown, episode 28. Gavin Maguire. Gav, thanks for joining us, mate. How are you? I'm all right, pal. Thanks for, thanks for speaking to me. Mate, very much looking forward to it. You've got, um, you've got fond memories of me. We've just had a little chat off camera. You've got, obviously got a reputation that precedes you as well in football. <laughs> so hopefully we'll talk a little bit about that. You tough, I have no tough, idea you. what you mean. No idea what you mean. <laughs> Let's start out the 92... 93 season, you joined me all in March 1993 from Pompey. And I just said to you off screen, you didn't play a vast amount of games for me all, but you played the ones you did play, mate, were, were very memorable ones in the club's history. Yeah, no, I was, I was fine. I mean, I, 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 it was a period in my career, actually. I did have um, quite a few injuries that kept me out and obviously eventually led me to finishing. Um, at the time I was at Mill, which, which was a shame because you're... You know, you you go there and you get the taste and the feel of what's going on and and the atmosphere and and then you pick up something and you, you're trying desperately to get back to that um, and it just wasn't really falling into place. You know, every time that happened. Mm. Signed by Mick McCarthy. What was he like, Big Mick? How did he persuade you to join the Millwall Revolution? Yeah, Mick was a lovely, lovely guy. Um, you know, obviously a very honest guy as a player and, and, and as a manager, to be honest. Yeah, he, he didn't really have to sell it to me. I mean, it was, you know, I was going from Portsmouth, um, you know, which is, again, fans-wise, a very passionate, historic club, um, and going to another club that obviously is is hugely passionate, if not more so. Um, so it wasn't really, a, a, you know, he didn't really have to sell it that hard. Yeah, true, true. What was your first impressions of the club? Um, I remember as a youngster playing uh, in the FA Youth Cup um, for QPR against uh, Millwall at the old den. And, um, you know, at that age, what were we, 18, 17, whatever. And um, it was uh, a, an intimidated place. It's certainly that word has been used a few times uh, regarding uh, the old den and Millwall. Um, but, oh, incredible. I mean, like we were talking about before, I, just, I was lucky enough to catch the last few games there. And I really do feel, you know, modern day players at Millwall and other clubs who missed out on playing that, you know, missed a huge experience, you know, mm. uh, an unforgettable experience at times. As I was saying, the, um, the big games that you played in, none bigger to start your Millwall career than your debut, West Ham away, 2-2. Yes, obviously, uh, leading up to it. I mean, there wasn't much time in it. I think there was a few days. But, you know, I knew the history from obviously being involved in football and um, had uh, other derbies under my belt with other clubs. But, um, yeah, going into that, you knew it, uh, it was special. Do you, remember, do you remember much about the day in the game? No, not really. I mean, I, I remember then I, I came with a little bit of a niggle in, in an ankle. And I remember I was, I, I was playing in midfield, which was a little bit alien to me or not as uh, an obvious position for me. Um, I just remember that just the, it was just electric, to be honest. Don't remember much. I remember, I think it was, it was did Rhino even score? Rhino scored, didn't he? Yeah, Rhino got the second. Year. Jamie Rooney opened the score in very early. That's right, yeah. So, uh, yeah, but I just remember it was, it was the, the passion was just incredible. It was amazing. Here's Marty. Good break for Millwall. A great chance for Millwall. Jamie Marty in the opening minute of the game. An amazing start then for Millwall, the visitors. An attack that sliced through. successive week he scored. He got one life with a 
just last week against Southend. He's got an equaliser for Millwall here today. And you said you was um, uh, it was a position that was alien to you. You're not a midfielder. And I always remembered you as a, as a holding midfield player. No, no. To be honest, I I played most of my career as as behind the back four as a sweeper, oh. um, and. I, I often got put, you know, at Portsmouth, I often got put in that position. Um, it wasn't a position I particularly enjoyed. Um, I'd, I'd like, at that time, I liked having the, the whole pitch in front of me. Um, but, you know, sometimes you can go in and, and you, if you fit in for someone and, and they're, they're out for whatever reason, suspension or injury, and, and you do okay, it's like, okay, you end up being, you know, a bit of a jack of all trades, master of none if you're not careful. Yeah, it's uh, it's not really a, posi a position that was um was that was that overly used back in the day in the nineties the sweeper that's quite um, that's quite a uh, modern day isn't it if anything yeah well I mean well, yeah we were we were using it we used it at Queensborough Rangers so that was what was that late eighties early nineties at Portsmouth we used it um you know it's, you know especially QPR we we finished fifth that year and you know I think it, it was maybe the start of it um, was round about then yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then obviously, you say your first game, West Ham away. Your second game is your home debut against your former club that we just brought you from, Portsmouth. That's right. Yeah. Mm, yeah, it was It was one of those where, you know, any player wants to uh, sort of, um, wants to do well against them, wants to show them what they're missing, wants to. Yeah, so that that was an enjoyable game. You know, you had your chance to maybe leave your foot in on a, on a few people that, uh, you felt maybe weren't as uh, honest and loyal to you. So, yeah, no, it was okay. I enjoyed that one. <laughs> Good day. A 1-1 one, one draw. John Kerr, I think, come off the bench and scored our goal that day. The That's older, right, yeah. American. Yeah. Uh, so there's a good picture of you coming behind him, celebrating. You look absolutely over the moon. Well, just... you've got to be, aren't you? You've just got to be, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The only way you top that is if you score it yourself, but that was never going to happen. We, um, we fall short that year, and we don't make the playoffs, but obviously... The last game of the of the season at the Den was was a massive one for many reasons. Obviously, because it was the last day in the club's history of playing there. Bristol Rovers home, we lose three nil. What, what must that be like coming from Portsmouth? You, so as you say, you walked into it in absolute prime time, didn't you? Hmm. Yeah, it was. I mean, the, the, the game, the last game, game of the season. To be honest, it, it it was a circus. You know, we we were fully aware building up to it that it was going to be mayhem and, you know, rightfully so. It was, you know, an end of an era. Um, so, you know, it, the result really didn't surprise me because, you know, there was so much else going on that day. Yeah. Uh, so many distractions that it was very difficult really to, to play the game. Um, you know, at times, uh, it was, it was funny as a referee would say to it, you know, before what was a, you know, when we're down that end, you know, we'll give a corner and we'll blow the whistle for the corner, but we won't be just running. So we went to run off and all of a sudden he said, no, 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 take the corner. And it was like, oh, man, what's going on? We didn't know what the hell was going on. So you're like trying to get off before the fans got hold of you. But um, amazing, amazing experience. It was a shame, obviously, with the result on the day, but what, what an experience. How much clothing did you return with to the dressing room? Because we're in rumours of not a lot on a lot of people. I remember Pikey. Pikey didn't have a lot on uh, Eddie Roberts, but uh, I think I said, "Oh, I can't again." It's I don't know if it's old age or well, it is old age. It's very difficult to remember. You know, it was a bit of a blur, really, that the end of the game. So it was a case of self-preservation, just get get off with what you can. I think. So, so as I said, you, you didn't play many games for me, or you played some pivotal ones. But you also, when you was fit, you was an ever present. You know, you came straight in again in that West Ham game. And you was an ever-present till the end of the season. Uh, when you joined me, well, you obviously come off the back of quite a serious injury at Pompey. Was that was that niggling away still, or? Um, I don't really, it wasn't particularly a serious injury when I joined. I I'd, um I think it was a uh, when I joined from Pompey. I'd, I went over on my ankle. Remember that? It was it was a niggling away, um, and I'd never, you know, I got it was, you know, don't get me wrong, it's okay to sign, but. You know, it's it was one of those where I knew I was going to have to rest it, and yeah, and was able to, but at the end of the season. But you know, it wasn't. A, a, I never felt I could give my best. Um, you know, and I was looking forward to the end of the season and just resting it and, and getting it right. But uh, mm. 
Yeah, you know, you just, you know, you, you, very rarely do you play without an injury back then. I mean, nowadays, these, these softies, they, you know, they, they're off for, they kiss the badge and then they're off for two months because they've, you know, got a few split ends in their hair. It's funny, though, because obviously injuries back in the day, in, obviously your, your career will get on too late, it was ended by an injury. And it's a shame because obviously you say about, the, you know, the players these days, but also the, um, the up-to-date technology, a lot of careers probably could have been saved, couldn't they, from injuries that were sustained back in the day? Yeah, definitely. And I, I think not only that, I think it's, it's you know, we weren't privy to the, the amazing uh, information that they've got now and knowledge about prep before games and training methods and, and diet and, you know, so much now. They're, you know, their, their starting point is a lot better than, than mm-hmm. ours. Um, you know, so the prevention is, you know, the preventative stuff is, is in place better. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's the key, I think, more than anything. I think the body will heal. Um, I don't think technology in many respects has moved on massively. I think it's the fact that, you know, and they've got massive squads, um, you know, where if, if you pick up an injury, you, you know, you don't, you're not, not forced to play because, you know, I was the first one to say, yeah, stick a, stick a quarter zone in it. I want to play. And, mm. and you did you, literally on the Thursday before a Saturday game, you couldn't walk, but you put a, this uh, miracle injection in and all of a sudden it's, the injury's gone, um, which, you know, down the line isn't ideal, but at the time, you know, you do anything to play. Of course, of course. Talking of squads, you just said squads. Let's talk about a few people in your squad. Uh, a few um, few characters, shall we say, from, from Mill history. Alex Ray, Malcolm Allen, Keith Stevens, Ian yeah. Bogu, we've spoken to recently as well. What, what were those boys like to be around day to day? Fantastic. I mean, it's obviously it was a, in that our generation of playing, it was very much a, a social co- culture. And um, yeah, very good gang to be around socially as well, as well as to play with. Who was your sort of you um, get on really well with at the club? Who was your closest to? Uh, let's think. I mean, that all, all right. I don't think I had, uh, you know, other clubs you, you can pick out there, there were certain people that you didn't gel with. But, you know, Millwall, it was great from day one, even to the point when, you know, somebody with um, the reputation of, of Pat Van den Howe came in. I thought, oh, we're not going to get on. But we got on like a house on fire. Um, no, all of us. There was a little group, core group of us that would all go out, the people you said. Um, yeah, so it's it was brilliant. Yeah, really good. You know, really got some fond memories of the lads. Brilliant. Okay, so then, um, obviously, we leave the old den. We go to a brand spanking new stadium. You must have been, what was your, how was you feeling at that time? You know, just coming to a club, which you, which you enjoyed the look of. Playing every game, new stadium. Would you have high hopes for yourself for that following season? Absolutely. I mean, amazing. I mean, when we first go in in the old, from the old dem, you know, it didn't obviously have the the history going into somewhere new, but it at in its day, what a fantastic modern stadium! It was brilliant. I've never gone into a brand spanking new stadium, so it, it was. Yeah, the club was felt like it was, you know, going in the right direction, really. Yeah, and then obviously you start the first ever game at the ground, the friendly, of course, against Bobby Robson's sport in Lisbon. Uh, a yeah, young friendly, loose, no. let's lose that a very loose term, friendly. It wasn't very friendly, to be honest. <laughs> which we suited us, to be honest. We were happy with that. Yeah, what was your memories of that day? Yeah, a lot of um, interesting uh, incidents uh, with opposition. Uh, obviously, Johnny Kerr scoring. Um, yeah, amazing. You know, we, the, in in players' eyes, to play against clubs like that is is fantastic. And to obviously match them physically and and beat them, it was uh, yeah, really really pleasing. It's the season then starts, and as I said, you, you know, you, you play the first three games, start the first three games of the season, first game of the season, uh, we win two one away at Stoke. The team that day was Casey Keller, Cunningham and Dawes, Tony McCarthy and Rhino. Andy Roberts, Ian Bogey, yourself, Tony Dolby, John Kerr, and Bruce Murray. There's a few, um, there's a few strong, experienced players in that in that starting lineup. It's a bit of a rogues gallery, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> like yeah, Bruce no, yeah. Uh, Bruce was lovely. I went, I went out to when I when I finished, I went out to uh, meet Bruce in the states and spent uh, a good few months out there with him. Um, yeah, brilliant. It, it, you know, it, it was great. Again, like you say, great start. You know, and it was like, well, hold on, this, you know, this, this, this could happen. This, mm. and then <laughs> we very quickly realised it might not happen. The first ever league game at the Den is your second, is uh, the second game of the season. We lose four one at home to Southend on the telly as well. Yeah. That was. That's right, I remember. Yeah, yeah, and it's like, 
hold on, what's going on here? You know, you sat out then, you, you know, I don't, again, you, you try and look back and pick, pick the bones out of it and try and work out the whys and what's, but, you know, it's, yeah, it, it was a little bit unexpected, that one. <laughs> and then the, the third game of the season now, you know, my memory isn't, I say I was 12 or 13 years old at the time, so I've, I've had a look through the archives. From what I can make out, the next game... <laughs> oh, God, that's all I was coming out. The archives. Sorry, Dusted mate. them off. <laughs> Dusted them off. Yeah, cheers. Thanks. From what I can make out, if the archives are correct, the stats. Let's call them the stats, not the archives. Um, all right. The next game, Wolves away 2-0. You're sent off. And that... Oh, but, uh, no, it can't be right. It, can't, it must be wrong. The stats must be wrong. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm pretty sure that, but it's definitely right. But that seems to be the last ever game for you for Millwall. Is that right? I just, again, I just, you'd have to make me right. I don't know. Um, I remember the sending off. Um, what happened? I don't remember what happened. I remember being sent off. Uh, yeah, I don't know. If that, I mean... I mean, an injury started to set in at this point, or I did. I mean, I remember you know there was a period of time I had a, a couple of groin problems, which um, they injected, and it would either fix it or it would come away, and it and it came away. So I had surgery on that, and then the other side, and yeah, and that was a period of time that you know I was struggling to get back fit because you it, in those days when you were playing in the the then reserves, you know the tempo wasn't like a first team game obviously so it was really difficult to get yourself back to first team match fitness so that I think that was I would have thought with the time scale you're talking about I think that's when um I got the call to go to Steve Wicks who was a he was manager at Scarborough and that's where the injury happened uh, okay, like, so you, okay so you went so you wasn't you you had a couple of groin problems at Millwall you yeah reserves, and then to get fit match fit they sent you out on loan to Scarborough yeah, no, it wasn't sent. I, you know, it was the, the offer was given to me by Wicko. He rang me personally and I, I said to the club, it would make sense um, because I wasn't getting any better and just to get up there and play some competitive football. Right, okay. Um, ready, ready to come back for the next season. Um, and uh, unfortunately up there, I, I, I can't remember which, which game it was. Was it, first, it was. was it first game or second game? Second game, I think it was, and yeah, and that's when I the ankle injury happened, and 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 then it was trying to get really. That was a long term process trying to get fit. And what happened you know, to your ankle? I had a bad ankle dislocation and break, um, but and it had uh, some metal work put in just to right it. Um, but and it just about a good seven months later the, it, it was still moving around so they went in again fixed that took some bone from my hip bone graft from my arm to protect it um so by then it was got a year and a half to be honest um you're still a middle player at this time as well yeah yeah still a middle player yeah still trying to get fit um I think I basically just got back to playing in 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 the reserves, but I, I wasn't right. It, well, it, you know, I couldn't. Uh, I don't think I could have been the player that I was, to be honest. And you know, not just physically, mentally, it was, it was hard. You couldn't really go through that again. It was hard work, not only for me but family members, and to you know live it as well and go through it with you, trying to you know pick you up when you're at your lowest. So no, I I, I then chose no. I've got to, I've got to retire. And luckily, the club looked after me financially. Um, you know, you're only, I think the the law is or the rules are that you, the club only have to pay um, six months money. They get the insurance money. They give you six months money, but they they pay me up a year. Um, so you know, again, it was I finished on good terms with them. I must admit, I, I you know, they looked after me. It must be tough, man. After coming from you know QPR. Little spell at Newcastle as well, Portsmouth, and then to Mill Wall, a, a regular as well, a first team regular. Mick McCarthy clearly rated you, know, said, listen to you when you wanted to go out on loan and get some game time at, at Scarborough. And then to have your career ended there must have been tough. Yeah, I think I don't think any I don't think any tougher than if it was you know if you were playing against Real Madrid and you know, it ended there. Mm. It's you know you don't realise. I, I certainly I don't didn't realise until God, twenty years later really how much. I hadn't really dealt with it and how much it, it shook me, to be honest. Um, mm. Yeah, but at the time, you know, it's, it's, you, you just think you're going to carry, because, yeah, you just got to, you know, I think you, well, I just blocked it out and thought, okay, let's, let's try and move on and try and do something else now. 
Mm. And what, what, what did you do after that? How old was you at this point as well? Uh, I was 26 when I got injured. Uh, so I went travelling for a couple of years, met back up with Pat out in South Africa a bit. Um, had a bit of a wild time. Uh, came back from that and then retrained and became a personal fitness trainer. And did it for about five years, one-to-one training. Really enjoyed it, but I just couldn't see myself doing it long term. Uh, then a, a friend suggested hairdressing. And my initial thought was, what? <laughs> so uh, I had an ex-neighbour who was in it years, had his own salon and said, if you're going to do it, go to Sassoon's in London. Uh, did a fast track course, which back then was about just under £9,000. It's now about 17000 I think. Uh, did that and yeah, then ended up working in high-end ladies, generally ladies hairdressers and uh, yeah, did that for mm, 23, four years. Had my own salon as well at times and yeah, just recently changed again. Yeah, just before, just after Christmas. Yeah, changed sure. direction. That must be... Um... For some fans hearing, obviously, you was notoriously a hard man within football, not just at Millwall. So you're now uh, exploring exploring other avenues like hairdressing. That must be a uh, <laughs> world's apart, mate. You know them two them two jobs. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, there, there was a period of time where I think the son got hold of hold of the uh, story and said, "Oh, you know, his, his tackles made your hair curl." Now he's tackling curls and gabbing a laugh and yeah so uh the usual awful sun puns came out and uh, with a couple of articles about it yeah oh dear well let's talk a little bit more about your times at me we'll say you know injury played its part unfortunately but we've had some great stories on your dressing room stories um i'll start with the one that kenny cunningham told me i think i'm sure it was kenny cunningham he said i said to him what's your most scariest moment at me a he said gavin mcguire drove me and him from the training ground in elton to the new den he said, and it took him about six minutes. He said, I've never been so scared in my life. He said, your, your, your driving was... Um, was it, the driving was like my plane. <laughs> <laughs> Erratic. Erratic. <laughs> or, or, or could be looked at as a, as a very good fast driver. I don't know, but... Well, yeah, exactly. Yeah, we'll, we'll go with that one. We'll go with the latter. Uh, Casey Keller uh, as well. You want me to, to, to deny it? Or... <laughs> um, <laughs> I think that's a true, that's a true, yeah. Uh, another one, Casey Keller said, uh, you was, all the boys were out training one day, so you was actually injured at the time. And it was I know, I know where you're going with this one. <laughs> was, was, was the weather a little bit cold? Yeah, it was snowing, you've come through riding yeah, a bicycle yeah. naked. Yeah, there was, um, yeah, there was, a, I think, a Swedish camera crew were over and uh, the lads were all training and and yeah I was in doing the you know, I was trying to recover from injury and yeah and I decided to get inside the perimeter of the training ground but I didn't tell anyone I just got on because we had bikes that we could go get some fitness on and I just started cycling round and all of a sudden the lads spotted me and then they all ran to like get me in the snow yeah but uh, I may have may have not uh, may have forgotten to put some clothing on at the time what was it like day to day in the training grounds? You always was you one of the main pranksters? Oh, there was yeah, I wouldn't say many, one of one of many there. It was uh, you know they're a lively lively bunch of lads. A lot of them obviously London London born and bred and uh, and then uh, yeah really really good. Just a really great spirit, fantastic spirit, which you know doesn't surprise you at a club that's got that sort of history and that. Uh, notoriety it's you know, there's a reason being and it's you're there because you pull together and you look after each other and yeah and I think more than anything it's that's the key you knew full well if you're in a, a sticky situation on or off the pitch that you had your back covered by someone well it was a brilliant uh, team team spirit Tuesday clubs were in full flow every Tuesday um <laughs> is there any other stories you can think of that you might want to share about us everyone seems to have by the way a Pat Mandon house story <laughs> Uh, yeah, it was always, I mean, the, it was like the joke, it'd always be a quick one, quick one up the road at the beehive. Uh, you know, you'd literally you'd go for a quick one. But, you know, we, you know, in the day, we we were only training, say, half past 10 till, or 10 till 12. And, you know, you didn't track, not like today. And, you know, we only really did it early in the week, um, you know, not making excuses or, you know, but we, you know, we, we played hard and as well as in off the pitch and yeah but we you know we 
we still got ourselves right. You know, maybe physically it wasn't the ideal way to do it, to come into training with, you know, uh, black bin bags on and s- sweating profusely. It wasn't maybe there in hindsight with the, what we know, the technical and health knowledge now. But, you know, we, that's what we used to do. Yeah. Right, so I've got a question for you. Um, you can take yourself out of this equation if you want. <laughs> But at one point at Millwall in the second season, it was you, Keith Stevens, Pat Vandenhow, and Terry Herlock were all there. Peace, the peace. I love Teese. I'll, I'll say Teese, whatever the question is. <laughs> well, you can take yourself out of the equation. If them three get in, get, get in a ring together, who's walking out as the champion? Uh, we'd all walk out together because we'd, we'd, be, we'd be too busy, you know, uh, respecting each other yeah we yeah it, 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 brilliant you know i ever played against them i don't think even i played against pat no none of us have really come up against each other um but i know the reason why you've picked the names you have and you know wouldn't want to upset any of them <laughs> yourself included so i've heard so um Okay, so you didn't um, say so it was a little bit of a difficult time for you at Mill. Although you've obviously clearly enjoyed it, you know, it didn't end the way you would have liked to. But if you could pick one dressing room story or a few standout memories from your time at the club, what would they be? Yeah, do you know what? That is so, so difficult. We should, we should, I should have prepped this one. Oh, sorry, I should, um, have, I, thought I should have told you. <laughs> oh, no, 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 leave it alone. Um, I don't know, really. I, I think, to be honest, it was the way, you know, normally we were such a, a raucous sort of dressing room before, uh, and and then the the last home game at the Den, and it was you know it was like palpable. The the sort of like we knew something was going to happen today, as in not in the result, but in we knew it wasn't going to be normal that that day, and 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 we were so right. It was it was just a circus from the from the moment we kicked off. The result, the yeah, you know, I think I had a torrid. I think I gave one away. Um, and if I remember right, if people have reminded me about it. Um, but yeah, just that, I suppose, was just the way we weren't the normal group that we were, you know, you know, normally cocksure and ready for it. It was like a real weird experience. Yeah, that was the strangest feeling. You could almost sense like a storm was brewing. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, and um, not a good one. Um, it, you know, be, no, because obviously at the end of it, no one was going to go back there and it was you know it's, I don't think until, until you experience that with any club let alone a club like Millwall you know that you, that's it that's the end of the road there it, it's awful I mean it's heartbreaking and you know strange even though you're going to something lovely and blah 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 and shiny and you you know it's it's you know I can't imagine that you know if I was a Millwall fan um how that feels I mean, you know I know as a player and, and a, a late player um you know what it meant and how lucky I was to experience it, but incredible, yeah, incredible experience. Weird, weird, weird experience. By the time the 90 minutes were up, Millwall's emotional fans had long lost interest in the outcome of a game their side was always destined to lose. It was time now for the souvenir hunters to move in and claim their last memories of Cold Blow Lane. Just finally, I always end with the same question. Uh, if you could go out tomorrow with two, uh, three of your old teammates, sorry, not two, you can take three of your old Millwall teammates with you for one last night out, one last hurrah. Who are you taking with you? Oh, that's hard, that, because, oh, no, that's really, that's, that's, a, that's a shitty question, that, because that's not fair. Um, no, I'm not going to answer that. Go, go fuck yourself. No, I'm not going to answer that. No. Unfair. Too many. Too many of you lovely boys that I used to play with. You are all magnificent men. Do you want to mention a few of them? Yeah. Oh, God. I mean, is it just the team you read out. Um, who, did, who did you not mention in that? Um, Johnny Byrne. Um, who did you not? Babsy. Um, who else did you not mention? Uh, I mean, John I was McGinney was pretty lively. Was you there when John McGinney was there? I wasn't there with McGinn. No, I wasn't there with McGinn. Um, yeah, I didn't really, you know, I remember playing against McGinn, I think, when he was there, and I didn't really gel with McGinn. But often you, when you go to something like I was saying about Pat, that I thought, oh, this ain't going to work out. But, you know, we were got on like a house on fire. So, no, they, it was, they were all great lads. Um, 
really, really, uh, it was, it's, you know, the, young, the youngsters who went on to have great careers, you know, mm. there was such a great, great club that the mentality was, it was spot on, you know, they, mm. as in everyone would look after each other. And that's always been my match. I've always felt that was my role as a player. And, you know, you've got the, very rarely do you have other people in your, in your team that are like that. But we had it in abundance there. And uh, no, that was, that's, that was one of the amazing things. Hmm. Gav, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you, mate. Really appreciate your time. And uh, as I said, shame it didn't work out for you. I mean, it was a you know, difficult time in your career, but you seem to have fond memories of the place. Oh God, yeah, we, you know, nothing but from memories, really, apart from you know, apart from injuries. But, 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 but you know, putting those aside, you know, if you're at any club, that they're not great memories, but amazing memories. Very, very proud, and I feel very lucky that I had the opportunity to pull the shirt on. To be honest, brilliant. Well said, mate. Thanks for joining us, Gav. All right, mate. You take care. Cheers, mate. Bye. Good, mate.